Get Warrior Tough Mental Training 101 with Andrew Whitman on 105.5 The Roar. Back to Andrew Whitman. All right, so Lee and I kept having this conversation going on the break. I said, stop, we can't do the show while we're not having the show. So, Lee, I'm going to let you pick up on that thought that you just told me. I, I just said that uh, I, I was reading a, a post that this was on Facebook that somebody was talking about when we go to school, they teach us a trade and they teach us how to do the trade, but they don't teach us how to be successful in the trade. Right, and, and, and so and, I got and, thoughts on that, especially and, as school's about to start. I mean, that that's all. Everything you're talking about, it will help you get a job. It will help you interview better. Oh yeah, and and if you if you know what your goals are, it will definitely help you in your job. Oh, I mean, well, not just goals. I'm just saying no, your target, your, yeah, your you outlook, you're going. your Absolutely. outlook. Absolutely, yeah. I don't know, hundred percent. And here's the thing: when I, we're about to start school, so the thing with school is, and this is this drives. Let me, me change nuts. my hat. Yeah, change your hat. This is what drives me nuts about this. And um, I'm going to get on my soapbox, and now, you know, uh, here's the deal about school. The way the whole thing's set up, it's setting people up for failure. Hmm. I'm so, you know, and I have teachers that are great friends. I mean, I have family members that are teachers, and I'm an, I would say that I'm an educator or trainer. I'm all about education and training and making ourselves better. But the way we have it set up is that we set the, we set the kids up and we say, here, here's a set of problems solve these problems oh and by the way we already solved them and you have to solve them the way that we tell you to solve them or you're going to be wrong so what we're doing is training people to think inside the box training people to solve problems that have already been solved oh and then we beat you down if you didn't solve it the way that i'm telling exactly. you to solve it and now when we get out into the workplace what what an employer needs is we got crazy problems that we don't even know. I mean, these are I mean, life happens. It's real life, real time. We don't know the answers to this. We need creative solutions to these problems. We need you to think this through, come up with a great solution to the problem. And uh, so what we have is this pervasive corporate culture of we can't do it. We have to do it this way because that's the way it's always been done. Uh, you know, and it's just nuts. And and we teach them from. Preschool, we start teaching them that. It's not just as parents, too. Yeah, well, but it's because we, we, we were taught that. I mean, and we're doing the best we can. The teachers are doing the best they can. The school system is doing the best. But the whole model is wrong. It, we need to turn this thing on its head and let folks, since that was part of Drew's vision, that we would teach critical thinking and creative problem solving, that we would tell kids, hey, look, figure out how to solve this problem. Here, Here's a problem we haven't solved yet. Go figure out how to solve it. And, and when you let people, when you unleash the genius of every human being, because I believe that every human is a genius, the way, if you understand how this brain works and the whole thing works, every human being is a genius. The, the reason that we say someone is more of a genius or less is because of IQ. That just means, and again, the IQ test is we're in the box, here's the questions, and it's somebody that could test well. You know, and the whole thing's set up. SATs, you know, GPA, everything is based on are you hitting all the benchmarks that says you're inside the box? and that you solve problems that we already know the answers to. We're not rewarding in any way, shape, or form critical thinking or creative thinking. Absolutely not. What we're doing is creating drones and robots. Which is the, the, the purpose of algebra. And a lot of kids say, well, what's the purpose of algebra and calculus and all that? It is to give you critical thinking so you can figure out how to solve problems. Okay, But you are correct. There, there is a process that they want you to go away, uh, go away about it. But there are more than one way to get the answer. There's always, and there's always more than one way to solve a problem at different angles. So Absolutely. What we're doing is teaching people to be myopic, and we only see things from this angle. And so that's why we get stuck. And this is why people uh, in psychology, you, know, you either choke or you panic. And, we're, um, you know, and I don't want to get into the difference between choke and panic, but uh, it's because you're tunnel. It's called tunnel vision in law enforcement or when we're in, in combat. I get tunnel vision. I'm myopic. I, everything else is discarded except this thing right in front of me, and I don't see any other way out. So then, that's when people make really bad decisions because they can't see it from another angle. So, and and this all goes back to mindset. So let's talk about these mindsets. Remember the the, the different mindsets that I came up with. Are, uh, you know, it, I know there's thousands of levels of consciousness. I break them down into five. The defeated mindset is the, you know, the, we're just defeated. We've already lost before we even start. It, the game's over. I can't win. It's Eeyore. Hmm, poo. You know, and I, I, you know, I was like this when I was younger. My wife would say, would you be positive? And I'd say, I am positive. I'm positive this ain't going to work. Well, I've already lost. And then the next level up is the survival minded. And I did, I went through this progression where now it's survival. And I would say this, man, I, it's just enough. I just need enough. I would say, you know, I don't care if I live in a tent. 
Well, I don't think my wife and kids would enjoy that. But that's all I need. I, all I need is, you know, you know, this backpack and this tent, and that's all I need. And that's all I need is this backpack, this tent, and, you know, and, and my and my MRE. And that's all I need. You know, what's it from the jerk when he kept grabbing one more thing? But it's, so 10% of folks, we're just in survival mode. It's just enough. I do just enough to have just enough because that's all I need. And then, you know, and then there's the average-minded, which are the masses. And they, they don't want to be comfortable I mean, they want to be comfortable. They don't want to be rich. They want to be comfortable. They want to be happy. And remember, you brought that up last week about, I just want to be happy. And then I've heard that a couple times since then, last week, you know, in the last week, I've, I asked that question. I don't want to be rich. I just want to be, and people say, happy. Okay, well. What does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? And then, this is the funny thing about the average-minded. And remember, this is one of the differences in mindsets that we went over, that the average-minded is controlled by external factors. The elite warrior controls themselves first and then goes to work on the externals. Most people that are average minded their happiness is based on external factors see and that's not the way it should be no because guess what wherever you go if you're not happy inside if you haven't taken control of yourself ceo of you you're not happy mind body and emotions in control if you're not happy wherever you go it doesn't matter you're going to be there you're going to be there but but it's it's, it's kind of like running a race if i run a race it's it it feels a lot better to win the race than it does just to finish the race. Well, it could be. I mean, it's, some it's, people it might yeah, be. The, the successes is what I'm right. saying. Right. Well, the and su- success is however you, de- however you define success. And I, you know, I could talk about that with Michael Phelps. You know, the first time he went to the Olympics was just to make the team was a success. You know, just to be there at 15 years old was a success. That last time he had to get the eight gold medals. He had that little notepad and him and his coach would be in the corner. Eight were his success. So success is however you define it. But happiness, man, you got you got to be happy you got to find a way to be happy. See, an elite warrior is happy no matter what, okay? Because I, I bring my happiness with me. The externals don't matter. And the average-minded person, they, they'll let somebody or something rob them of their happiness. If things don't go the way they want at work, they ain't happy. If the neighbors, you know, snubbed them or whatever, they ain't happy. You know, if the neighbor got a new car but I didn't, I ain't happy. And on and on. So the average-minded, their happiness is controlled by external factors. The elite warrior, you know, is they control themselves first. So let's go back to the so the uh, the average minded. It's the masses. Uh, I don't want to be rich. Just want to be comfortable. I want to have security. Uh, they play not to lose. And then there's the tyrant. You know, the tyrant is uh, I'm looking out for number one. I'll mow you down. Every man for themselves. And um, it's all about me. You know, and when, and when I come across these folks, these are there's a lot of folks that are um, in high end executive positions. They got there doing this and they've had success so they they feel like i'm i'm here i'm i'm good i've had success i've got money i've got the position i got the promotion but they're miserable they operate out of fear they're afraid to lose everything and they burn relationships left or no one wants to be around them yeah they've done it at other people's expenses yeah. a lot of time oh i know <laughs> and then uh the elite warrior which is less than one percent i think it's less than one percent these are a class act they operate out of love and abundance they say this i'm the problem and i'm the solution I'm the problem, and I'm the solution. If I have a problem, it's me, uh, and, but the good news is I'm also the solution. All right, I'm also the solution. So then we were talking about the differences in these mindsets, so we're just kind of holding up the mirror. You know, are you, you know here's what the average-minded say, and here's what the elite warrior says. So the average-minded, uh, they're controlled by external factors. The elite warrior controls him or herself first, then goes to work on the external factors, which, again, with happiness, is it internal or external? Well, yeah, people be like, well, I'm just look, if they're looking for the perfect place to live or the perfect place to work or the perfect place to go to church or the perfect school, I'm like, don't go there because you'll screw it up. If you find it, don't go there because you will mess it up. Because wherever you go, if you're not happy, you're bringing that unhappiness with you wherever you go. Perfect, perfect is an illusion, first of all. Perfect. Right. There's nothing, nothing. Right. And perfect. if you're looking for that, you ain't never going to find it. So you got to find a way to be happy wherever you're at. And there's some great stuff out there. There's a book called Shameless Happiness. That's a good one to get. It's on Amazon. It's just a little quick, you know, I don't know, like 30-page book. But it just gives yourself permission to be happy. And then the average-minded, they avoid risk. The elite warrior attacks risk head-on, and they manage it. And the word manage just means to be in charge. So as the elite warrior, I'm a risk manager. It means I'm in charge of risk. I'm a conflict manager. I'm in charge of the conflict. I'm a stress manager. I'm in charge of the stress. See, I'm in charge. And it's just so much easier if I'm in charge. And see, every genius, know, you, your genius brain knows that you know the right answer. If you give yourself that power, 
things work out fantastically. Is there a difference in being in charge of something and being in control? Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, no, nah, I don't know. I mean, I control what I, I control my body, mind, and emotions. I'm in charge of my mind, body, and emotions. There may be a difference, but I don't. I don't make. I don't make the difference, Lee. I just. I want to be in complete control of myself, and I want to be in complete control. Now, with being in charge of the risk, I can't control every factor, but what I can control is my response. There you go. That, that's what I was asking. Yeah, so I'm, I'm in control of how I was. Now, I can't control anything, any events that are external to me. I can't control anything external. No event on planet Earth can I control. The only thing I can control is my response, which gives me my outcome. If I don't like the results that I'm getting, the only thing that I can change is my response. That's why two hours of coaching ain't getting it done because you're not going to change your response in two hours. You may pick up on something, you know, it it would be so minuscule that it's not going to have an effect on your results. Now, the average-minded lives in delusion. The elite warrior lives in objective reality. Man, I take an honest assessment assessment of myself, honest assessment of where I'm at. What I'm, you know, I know, honestly, I could tighten up my diet. I had ice cream last night because I rewarded myself. It's like, man, I want some ice cream. So I had ice cream. I really could tighten that up. I didn't need it. I just wanted it. Let's just be honest. I didn't need it. I probably shouldn't have had it, but I just wanted it. That's honest assessment. And what you're talking about, well, that was talking about the mirror. It's really hard to look at yourself in the mirror sometimes. Yeah, and when I talk about that on the road, too, like this is the homework that I'll give people is to go look in the mirror and then just say, I love you. Because, you know, when we're talking about self-esteem, uh, when we look in the mirror, that's mostly what we see is the flaws. And I have that same issue, too. I look and I, you know, I got, I'm getting crow's feet. I, man, I'm looking for eye cream with retinol. You know, my hair's thinning a little bit. I mean, people are like, is that vain? I don't know. I mean, we all look in the mirror and see flaws, stuff that we don't like. We have to get over that and accept ourselves. Because here's the deal. It's like what they found out, the number one fear of all human beings is rejection. It's not failure. It's rejection. And the way the brain, we found this out in neuroscience, the way the brain registers rejection is the same way as it registers physical pain. So, you know, in high school when you had that first crush, crush and you broke up and it hurt, it really did physically hurt. It would be like somebody hitting you on the head with a hammer. It hurt like that. So because we don't like pain, we avoid pain. People avoid pain more than they'll approach pleasure. They will do whatever they can do to avoid rejection because it hurt that time. They're not going to do that again. So the number one need that we're looking for is acceptance. People are looking for acceptance. So go look in the mirror and accept yourself because once you internally accept yourself, once you accept you and who you are, I don't look for it outside anymore. I'm not looking for it from somebody else, and I'm not afraid to be rejected. The reason people are afraid to be rejected is because they haven't accepted themselves. They don't know who they are. They haven't worked all that out. They're not CEO of them, and they don't accept themselves. Once you internally accept yourself, I don't get insulted when you say bad things to me. When you say mean and hurtful things to me, I don't internalize that because I've already accepted myself and I've moved on. So you cannot reject me. I will not give you that power. There's no person on planet Earth that has the power to reject me. I won't give it to you. I'm the CEO of me. That makes total sense because no matter what somebody says, you already know what you are. It doesn't matter what they call you. It doesn't matter what. Right, because I you know, know who that I you, am. Right. You know the truth about who you are. Right, and I have my identity statement, and I and that's part of my self-talk is that mantra. You know, I'm a man of excellence who always keeps his word. Hey, you're a blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm a man of excellence who always keeps his word. Good talking to you. Right, so that's that objective reality. Uh, the average-minded person loves to be comfortable, and the elite warrior is comfortable being uncomfortable. We'll fly without a safety net. We get very comfortable flying without a safety net. It's great. It's so much fun. Um, but people, they just they have a hard time letting go of uh, the safety net or the teddy bear or the security blanket or any of those things. And then this is where we kind of left off last week. I think the average-minded practice a skill until he or she gets it right, but the elite warrior practices a skill until he or she can't get it wrong. And this is what I'm talking about with the two-hour coaching. We do a two-hour coaching. Oh, there's a skill. Yeah, I got it right one time. No, baby. You got to practice it until you can't get it wrong. I'm creating that meta program. I need to create the program where it goes into my non-conscious. It runs in the background constantly. And now I have that elite warrior mindset. I need to program that so that it happens outside my 126 bits, that it, it happens automatically, that that is my default mode, uh, that I would have to interrupt that with my 126. 
It's just like breathing or driving. Remember I talked about driving the car. There was one of the Scandinavian countries. They were driving on the left-hand side like Britain, and then they wanted to change the right-hand side of the road like us. When they went to do it, everybody was freaking out. There's going to be accidents everywhere. We've always driven on the left-hand side. It's going to be crazy. Nothing good is going to happen. What they found out was that uh, once they did it, uh, the roads actually got safer. Accidents went down. And uh, unbelievable, because what happened now, everybody started thinking about where they were driving. So they went from autopilot. They brought it back into the 126 until that became autopilot again. What's up, Lee? Now you got a phone call from Jeff. All right. Hey, Jeff, what's up, man? Hey, good morning. Enjoying the show. Thanks uh, for being there. Yeah, man. Thanks for calling, brother. Hey, look, Andrew, I got a question for you. I got a loved one that uh, that uh, has uh, a lot of depression. And outwardly, you know, they're, they're very outgoing and... and, and I, and, and uh, fun to be with, etc. But a lot of depression. I, what what can I do to encourage and help that person? Well, how do you mean depression? Can you tell me a little bit more? Just I mean, you don't have to get personal on the air or whatever. Just kind of give me a little more background because I don't I don't know exactly I, how you mean. I'm sorry, Andrew. I, I couldn't hear you, brother. How do you mean that they're depressed? How do you mean they're de- are they? You said they're outgoing on the outside, but how do you mean they're depressed like inside? I don't. Well, because of. They shared that with me finally. Oh, okay. So they, they said that deep down. Okay, so, well, you know, uh, you know, depression is, in the World Health Organization, says that depression is the number one disability worldwide. And a lot of depression comes from letting our emotions, as CEO of us, our emotions are in control. And so, and again, this is a process. It's a workout process. There's no quick fix for it. Um, but this goes back down to the self-esteem thing and accepting ourselves. And once we accept ourselves, then we can start to get that emotion under control of rejection or depression. And the interesting thing is that they found out, Jeff, when they did MRI brain scans and imaging, that when we are depressed or anxious or worry, half of our brain actually shuts down. It's the creative problem-solving half. The genius part of our brain shuts down. So um, what I teach my folks to do is to ask the question, all right, I'm depressed, but if I wasn't depressed, how would I do it? So I ask that question. It's the two-minute rule, I call it. How would I do it? Man, I'm depressed. Okay, I'm, if I wasn't depressed, though, how would I do it? How, what would that look like? And then I start thinking down that track of how it, I give myself permission to go find the answer of what it would look like if I wasn't depressed. And so that's a great question to ask, um, you know, your loved one. Hey, okay, so if you weren't depressed, though, tell me what that looks like. And then I'd say this again, you know, tell me more about that. You know, what are the issues with that? But, you know, paint that picture for me. And, and once we get start painting the, the picture of how great our life could be, um, we're, we're flipping that switch and we get off of the, um, we're, we're changing our feedback loop. We get off of the self-fulfilling prophecy of I am depressed and my life's awful and I'm tired. And two, we change it to here's my new truth. That's what it looks like. I'm not depressed anymore. That uh, my life is awesome. That I've accepted myself and I'm going to uh, raise my level of thinking to the elite warrior status. And, Again, it's a coaching process, and I would say get, you know, get Mental Toughness 101. It's on the website, getwarriortough.com. Just go in and get Mental Toughness 101. Also, I would subscribe to the YouTube channel. Listen to these podcasts. Listen to these shows. Just start feeding on this stuff. And when you feed on this, and you, what will happen is you're reprogramming. That's what we call it, programming. What, is it, what are we listening to? I, I know I probably shouldn't say this on the air, but I don't listen to, like, talk news, man. I don't listen to, you know, the political stuff and all that. And I don't watch TV and watch the news because they only tell me bad stuff which is very depressing if you listen to them the zombie apocalypse would have happened 15 times already hey andrew i want i want to tell you thank you i'm gonna i'm gonna hang up and listen on there because i really can't hear on the phone so well okay all right brother thanks jeff thanks for coming thank you yeah so all right so do you remember what uh what category katrina was when it landed yes it was category five yeah no it wasn't it was a three man you Google it. They no, said no, it you're, was a no, five. No, no you're, you are correct. You're correct. It no. was a five at one time, yeah, and it dropped and down they, at landfall. Right, yeah. but they didn't. They didn't. They didn't put that out that it was a three. That at is landfall. correct. They just kept saying it's a five. It's a five. Why? Because it, it sells more copy. It's more does that. And see, this is what the news and the media and programming does. Is it? It ramps us up, so we're operating out of fear. It ramps us up. It would be depressing if I listened to that stuff. Especially the Weather Channel. <laughs> well, it's not just the Weather Channel. It's all the media. No, the, no, you're all right. The media no, I, don't, I don't watch it either. I can't. Because they are, and, here, and I ain't mad at them, because you know who their, you know who their market is? is the average-minded, the survival-minded, than the defeated. 
they that's their market is you know oh it's blue monday wednesday's hump day tgif thank god it's friday man if you're saying all those things why would you want to fast forward that's depressing that you would fast forward through five days of your life your purpose isn't big enough if you can't wait to just get through the week your purpose isn't big enough and see what you're feeding on that stuff you're programming on that stuff that's the stuff that gets you uh more depressed let's take a quick break and we'll come back and, and hit some more of this A company that has happy employees will be more effective. A company that has employees that know how to deal with obstacles and problems will make more money. A company that gives their employees the tools to make those things happen is the company that turns to Andrew Whitman. Andrew has been teaching leadership, performance discipline, emotional intelligence, critical thinking, and mental toughness for almost 30 years. He's a veteran with combat experience in the Marines and experience as a police officer, federal agent, and security contractor for the State Department. His keynote speeches, half-day, and full-day seminars are engaging, effective, and energizing. Your employees will leave feeling empowered. They'll learn how to foster better communication, build strong working relationships, develop crisis and conflict management skills, and more. Visit GetWarriorTough.com to read testimonials from people just like you. GetWarriorTough.com 